Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror thriller film, Dead End. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a family inside a moving car. The father drives the vehicle, his wife sits beside him, while their daughter, son, and the daughter's boyfriend are sitting in the back seat. It is Christmas Eve, and they are driving to the wife's family to celebrate the holiday. The ride is moving smoothly, but suddenly, the father begins to fall asleep. Seconds later, the screams of the whole family and the blaring horn of a truck wakes up the father. The father quickly maneuvers the car to the side of the road to avoid the truck. Then the father inspects the vehicle, while his wife realizes that they might be lost. The father informs his wife that he took a shortcut instead of taking their usual road. After that, the father gets back inside and drives away. Inside the car, the son starts to piss off everyone with his rude behavior. The mother scolds her son and asks everyone to sing a Christmas song to pass the time. Suddenly, the father abruptly stops the car and informs everyone that he saw a mysterious woman dressed in white in the forest. Then the woman suddenly appears at the father's window holding a baby. The father tries to talk to the woman, but is not speaking, but the father still decides to help her. The daughter suggests that she get out of the car, so the father can take the woman to a nearby cabin. In the car, the family begins to ask questions to the woman, but she is still not speaking. Moments later, the family arrives at a wooden cabin, and the son quickly gets out to be away from his family. Then the son goes into the woods, he brings out an adult magazine, and begins to comfort his hot dog. Meanwhile, the father and mother check the cabin, leaving the daughter's boyfriend alone in the car with the mystery woman. The boyfriend tries to get information from the woman, but she is still not answering. The boyfriend sees the wedding ring on the woman's finger, and he begins to talk about his plan to propose. On the other hand, the daughter is walking, while rehearsing her breakup speech with her boyfriend. The following moment, the woman unexpectedly speaks in the car, and she tells the boyfriend her child's name. She passes the child to him, and the boyfriend realizes that there are a lot of blankets on the child's face. The woman says that he has nothing to worry about because the child is dead. The boyfriend laughs, thinking it was a joke, but when he peeks on the blankets, he sees the dead child. The boyfriend screams like he is about to pee in his pants. In the woods, the son hears the boyfriend scream, so he quickly tucks in his dick. The mother and father then rush to the car and see that the boyfriend and the woman have vanished. While walking, the daughter sees a funeral car. As it passes by, she sees her boyfriend at the back, screaming for help. The daughter immediately runs to her family and informs them about the funeral car. The family gets in the car and rapidly runs after the funeral car. The father abruptly stops the car again, and he asks for a flashlight. When the father goes outside, he sees the mutilated body of the boyfriend. The family follows the father, and upon seeing the body, the daughter faints. The son gets the daughter inside the car and helps his father take the boyfriend's cell phone. The mother immediately takes the cell phone and attempts to call for help. However, instead of hearing the police, the mother hears a woman begging for help. The father instructs his son to drag the boyfriend's body to the side of the road. The mother goes inside their car and sees her daughter silently sitting. Then the father and his son also get inside the car. They plan to drive to the police, and the father sees a road sign that says, Marcotte. The father instructs his son and wife to check the map because the place is unfamiliar to them. However, the son and the mother are frantic, and they fail to locate the place. They calm themselves down, and they head off to Marcotte. Moments later, the son raises his suspicions about the recent events, thinking it is connected to alien activity. The son says that they are the only vehicle on the road, and all of their watches stopped at 7.30. However, no one listens to the son's suspicion, so he frustratingly gets back to his seat. Seconds later, the daughter sings a Christmas song and creeps out her family. The family knows that the daughter is still in shock, so they sing along with her. Minutes after, the mother wakes up and realizes that they are still on the same road, so the father informs her that he has not seen anything else for the last few minutes. The father again stops the car when he sees a baby carriage in the middle of the road. The son goes out to check the carriage and pretends to be pulled by it to scare his parents. The family sits on the roadside while they plan to navigate their way. Then, the father argues with his wife and the son checks his sister. The daughter is still silently sitting at the back, so the son attempts to snap his sister out of shock. The daughter remains silent, so the son frustratingly gets out and he sees the baby carriage again in the middle of the road. The son calls his parents' attention, but they think their son is pranking them again. The father pushes the carriage off the road and gets back inside the car with his family. As the night gets more profound, the mother starts to overthink. They had been on the road for quite some time, and the only thing they saw was the cabin. 
The father turns on the radio, and instead of hearing a station, they hear a chilling cry of a baby. The father quickly shuts off the radio and screams that he has to suffer Christmas every year because of his wife's family. Suddenly, the car's tire blows out, causing the father to stop the vehicle. Unexpectedly, the daughter speaks up, and she informs everyone that she is pregnant. Seeing the opportunity, the son confesses that he smokes drugs. However, the father does not mind his children's smelly bullshit, and he goes out to change the tire. Meanwhile, the son leaves them to smoke drugs in the woods. Suddenly, the woman appears out of nowhere, startling the son. The woman shushes the son, and tongue massages him. However, the woman slowly cuts off his lips. At the same time, the father finishes changing the tires. Just then, they see the funeral car, and as it passes, they see the son inside, screaming for help. The mother runs after the funeral car, while the father and the daughter get inside the car to chase it. In the car, the father sees the woman in the woods, staring at them. The father dismisses it and drives away. Then they chase the funeral car, but fail to find it. Not long after, the vehicle hits something, causing them to stop. The hysterical mother quickly runs to her son, who is mutilated. The father and his daughter are in pain, while they look at the crying mother. Suddenly, the mother blurts out that she had an affair, and that her husband is not the son's biological father. Left with no choice, the father decides to drag the mother out of the heartbreaking scene. The family decides to put the mutilated body at the back of the car. Then, the daughter opens a present she bought, which is revealed to be a shotgun. Unlike before, the daughter now sits in the front, while her mother sits in the back seat, and the mother is showing signs of insanity. They see the road sign Marcotte again, which frustrates the father, because there are still no signs of the place. The father worries that the lady in white might get to them before they reach Marcotte. The father then shares a story similar to the one they are experiencing. He says that a couple was driving from a wedding, and suddenly they saw a little girl standing by the side of the road. They stopped the car and helped her. Then they tried to talk to her, but she remained silent. Suddenly, they heard a scream from the back, and the next thing they saw was the child's belongings with her name on them. The couple then realized that the little girl's entire family had died five years ago, in a tragic accident on the road. After the story, the daughter clarifies to her father if he truly believes that the lady in white was one of the little girl's family. They stopped the car before the father could answer, because the mother needed to vomit the junk food she ate. After that, the mother finds the shotgun, and she looks ecstatic. The father and his daughter become scared, and they try to convince the mother to put down the gun, but the mother refuses. The mother insists on playing with her dead son, which causes another burst out from the father. The father yells at his wife that their son is dead, and he is hoping to wake her up from her illusions. However, the mother refuses to believe it, and shoots the father on the leg. Then, the daughter instructs her mother to get inside as she aids her father. The father screams in pain as his daughter treats the wound. The moment after, they get back on the road again. The daughter scolds her father for drinking while driving, while the mother is asleep in the back seat. The father then shares that the road must be a military base, explaining why it is not on the map. The daughter dismisses her father, and she decides to sleep. Following that, the daughter wakes up without her father on her side. The daughter quickly comes out screaming, and the father comes out from the back of the car to calm his daughter down. The father then shares a piece of good news with his daughter. The father hunches that they are close to reaching Marcotte. He is hopeful that within an hour, they might be there. They step to get back in the car, then the mother startles them. Surprisingly, the mother reveals that she knew that her husband cheated on her with one of her close friends. Then, the mother looks at the forest, and she asks who the people in the woods are. After that, the mother waves at the people in the woods that she claims to see. Shortly after, the mother talks about seeing her friend's face in the woods, who died 20 years ago. The mother stubbornly wants to speak to her dead friend, but the father refuses to stop the car because of her nonsense. The next moment, the mother jumps off of the moving vehicle. The father quickly steps on the brake and goes out to search for the mother. However, the mother vanishes, leaving her belongings in the middle of the road. Just then, they see the funeral car from afar, driving in their direction. The father shoots at the car, aiming for the driver. But the car suddenly stops and backs up as the mother appears. The mother looks disheveled, with part of her brain exposed at the back of her head. The father is left shocked when he realizes that he shot his wife instead of the driver. The mother then touches her open wound, drawing circles with her fingers. Seconds later, the mother collapses on the ground and dies. The father then walks away while holding the shotgun. The daughter quickly runs to her father, and she tries to stop him from killing himself. The father apologizes to his daughter for attempting to commit suicide, but he believes that eventually, the lady in white will get to them. However, the daughter refuses to believe him, and insists that they continue driving because every time they stop, someone dies. 
The father and his daughter put the mother in the car, and he continues driving. Time passes by, and the father is now tired, so he lets his daughter drive the car. They go again for hours, but still fail to reach Marcotte. Because of that, the father then decides to walk through the woods to look for Marcotte. Only their flashlights and the moonlight guides them to see, as they step inside the scary forest. The father then stumbles into a fence, and not far from that, they see an ample white light. Expectantly, the father and his daughter walk towards it, only to be confused and enraged to see that the light came from their car. The father then realizes that the car is still locked, but someone turned on the headlights. But despite all of that, the two decide to get back in the car to escape. However, the father sees the same cabin they passed before and realizes that they have been going in circles. Unlike before, the lights inside the place do not work, so the father uses a match to see, while his daughter looks for their flashlight. Seconds later, the lady in white appears and scares the smelly shit out of the father. The daughter hears the commotion, and she sprints to her father to take him outside. Like the mother, the father starts to have noticeable changes in his behavior, and he beats his daughter unconscious. After knocking her out, the father wakes up from his craziness and puts his daughter in the car. Before leaving, he sees the lady in white in the woods and chases her with a shotgun. The father shouts his sentiments as he chases the lady in white, but not long after, the woman attacks and kills him. Meanwhile, the daughter wakes up from the noise outside, so she quickly starts the car and drives away. However, the car ran out of gas, so the daughter had no choice but to walk. She taunts the lady in white to take her to, but no one comes out. She then sees body bags lying on the road, containing the lifeless bodies of her family and boyfriend. As the daughter mourns their death, the funeral car pulls up, and the lady in white appears out of nowhere. The lady in white tells the frightened daughter that the funeral car is not there to take her. After that, the lady in white gets inside the funeral car and drives away, leaving the daughter alone with the corpses. Seconds later, a loud horn scares the daughter, who is left unmoved as the light envelopes her. The following moment, the daughter wakes up in hospital, and she is frightened. The doctor quickly calms her down and assures her that her baby is safe. Then the doctor talks to a man, who claims to have found the family after the car crash. The doctor discusses the accident with the man, saying that the daughter is the only survivor. Then the man thanks the doctor, who is coincidentally named Marcotte, for her work. After their conversation, the man offers a ride to Dr. Marcotte. His car is the same as the funeral car in the accident, which seemed to tell that all the weird happenings might just be their near-death hallucinations after the car accident. However, the film ends with two workers cleaning up the road after the accident, and the workers find a note that the father wrote, proving that everything they experienced in the endless loop was possibly real. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.